Hey friends, what up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Yud Tes, Daf 19 of Masech Rosh Hashanah. Um, friends, the first part of Daf Yud Tes is super interesting. It talks about Megillus Tinus. Friends, do you know what that is? Um, Alright, well, it talks about it. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then we just kind of move on to more about like the messengers going out and telling everybody about Rosh Chodesh. Um, so yeah, let's talk for a second about Megillus Tinus. What is that? Megillus Tinus was this brysa that they had that basically lists a whole bunch of like yomtivs, essentially. A whole bunch of days that you're not allowed to fast on those days. Some of them you're also not allowed to eulogize on those days. But uh, yeah, that's what Megillus Tinus is. So now, friends, you ready for this? Let's jump in. So, um, Itmar. It's like, we got a little bit of work to do on Dafir Chesim and Bez. It's just... There isn't like a real good stopping point until like you'd test some base. So like, I don't know, it just made sense to me to kind of start from here today, even though we got a little bit of work to do. But uh, yeah, so we're probably about like, I don't know, 15 plus lines from the bottom of Yud Chesim Um The third word on the line is Itmar. Itmar Rav Reb Chanino Amri. Uwa. So it says Rav and Reb Chanino. Bitla or Bitela? What do you guys think? Butla? Maybe Butla. Bodla Megillus Tinus. Oh. So, Rav and Rabbi Hanina said Megillus Tinus is bottle. It's like it doesn't apply anymore. All those days that like, you know, that are listed in that brisa that says that their yomtivs don't uh, fast on those days, uh, it's irrelevant. It's null and void nowadays. Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shubin Levi, Amre, but says, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shubin Levi, low Bodla Megillus Tinus. The opposite. That Megillus Tinus is still relevant uh, nowadays. All those days listed that we don't fast on those days apply nowadays. Rab, Rab Chanina Amre, Botla Megillus Tainis. So, as we said, Rab and Rab Chanina said that the Megillus Tainis is Botla. Hochi Kamer. This is what it means. Bizman Shiei Shalom, you Lusosan Lusimcho, in Shalom Tzon. That, well, we said regarding uh, those fast days. That we mentioned yesterday, right? Um, the Shiva, uh, well, the fast of Tammuz, Av, Tishrei, uh, Teves, that when the Beis Hamikdash is uh, going to be around, so then, right, as long as there's peace, so then they're actually going to be very happy days. Only when there's no peace, so then uh, they are fast days. So basically, we have these Yom Tivs, right? So you have all these days, right? The 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 fast of Tammuz, Av, etc. So when there's peace, so they're Yomim Tovim, right? When the, when the Beis HaMikdash was around, they were festivals. But now that there's no Beis HaMikdash, so they're fast days. So also, Bahanuch Nami, these Kihani. And these are the same thing. That Kilu, when there was the Beis HaMikdash, so then all of these days that were listed in Megillus Tainus were Yom Tivs. We don't, right, we're, 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 we're days that we um, sort of mark and we would not fast on those days. But however, now that there's no Beis HaMikdash. So, you know, th- those special days are no longer a thing. And therefore, um, yeah, so all those days that we don't fast on them, that are listed in the Megillus Tainus, um, they, I mean, it's not like a thing anymore. Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Shub, and Levi Amre, low about the Megillus Tainus. Whereas, uh, Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Shub, and Levi said that Megillus Tainus is still relevant, and all of those days listed, even to this day, we would not fast on them. Hani who the Talinu Rachman and Bivinu Beis Hamikdash that Davke um, these fast days that were listed in the pasuk, right? The fast of the uh, basically the fast of Tammuz and Av and Tishrei and Teves. So those were connected to the Beis Hamikdash, right? As the pasuk says, right? That. If there's a Beis HaMikdash, so then there are going to be happy days. No Beis HaMikdash, then there are going to be fast days. However, Aval Hanuch, Kedekai Mekai, but this Brisa, which talks about these days that we don't fast on them, that, that has nothing to do with the Beis HaMikdash being around or not. And therefore, even nowadays, when there's no Beis HaMikdash, these, these days are still special days, and we still do not fast on them, even to this day. Most of Rav Kahana. So, Lemaise, Rav Kahana Sakasha. Maisid Vagazu Tainis Bihanaka Bilud Kivaldig. So Hanukkah, Hanukkah, everybody knows what Hanukkah is? The Maisa, I was in a groove recently. I was in a groove recently, 
And this fellow was preparing something for Hanukkah. I didn't quite understand. Although I guess Hanukkah isn't that long off. Holy smokes. When's Hanukkah? Wow, are we well? Hanukkah is like a month. I guess it's not as crazy as it sounds. Anyways, he was preparing something for Hanukkah. I didn't, I didn't quite understand. But uh, all right, what do you want me to tell you? You could do anything in a groove. You could prepare for, you could prepare for Hanukkah in a groove. <laughs> all right, even in October. Give all the akoponim. So, so, so it says of Kahana, my it goes with Tainas be So there was a story that so Hanukkah, of course. So there was a whole miracle that happened. We learned to Masech the Shabbos, Perik Bamem Adlikin, about the whole miracle of Hanukkah. Um, anyways, uh, we eat donuts and stuff, latkes. I saw, I was watching this video of this guy making latkes. That was interesting. Anyways, um, so I keep on getting distracted. We we're talking about Hanukkah. Now, Hanukkah is one of those days that was listed in uh, Megillus Tainus. That, uh, of course, uh, you know, Hanukkah is, uh, we, is, is a special, right? Hanukkah is a festival, holiday of sorts. And we do not fast on Hanukkah. I think I may have been born on Hanukkah. I keep on, I, I forget. Um, but uh, my parents got married on Hanukkah. All right, let's go find there. I keep on getting distracted. Hanukkah is in Megillus Tainus. We don't fast on Hanukkah. Now, because Rutain is Bechanaka. But, Belud, in Lud, friends, who was in Lud? Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer was in Lud. So in Lud, they, they made a fast day on Hanukkah. Now here's the thing. So Hanukkah is in Megillus Tainus. However, the Shaila is, now of course, there's no Beis HaMikdash. So, um, do we say, well, you know, if there's no, if Megillus Tainus is irrelevant now, so then fast all you want on Hanukkah. If, Megillus Tainus is still relevant nowadays. Well, then don't fast on Hanukkah. So now there was an incident because with Tainus be Hanukkah be Lud. And in Lud, they made a fast day on Hanukkah. The yard Rabbi Eliezer, the Rachatz. Rabbi Eliezer said, forget about it. He went and he bathed. Rabbi Yoshua, the Siper, Rabbi Yoshua went and got a haircut. I.e., Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua publicly demonstrated that this is not going to fly, right? You're not going to create, uh, you're not going to make a fast day on Hanukkah. It's Megillus Tainus. It's one, it's one of the, it's one of these days that you don't fast on. Now, interestingly, we saw a Gemara in Masech the Sukkah that described Rabbi Yoshua's schedule during the um, Simchas Beis HaShoeva. So it would seem to me like Rabbi Yoshua, interestingly, did live during the time of Beis HaMikdash. Of course, his Rebbe was Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai was during the destru- lived through the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. And it would seem like Rabbi Yoshua also, at least at some point in his life, lived during the Beis HaMikdash. But the, imp- uh, the uh, implication right now is that this story happened after the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. And Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yoshua uh, were basically saying, hey, how can you be making a fast day on Hanukkah, it's in the Megillus Tainus that this is not a fast day. And they said to the people of Lud, What you have to do now is you actually need to make up a fast and you have to repent essentially. You have to do a fast for the fact, for the, for the fact that you thought to create a fast day on Hanukkah. So what do we see? So we see that it sounds like the Megillus Tainus is even relevant today. That even nowadays, Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yeshua were saying, Hanukkah is a day that we don't fast. Implication being, because Megillus Tainus is, is, is as relevant today as it ever was. Amr Bith, Amr Yosef says of Yosef, shiny Hanukkah. Don't bring a proof from this story, because this story was about Hanukkah. Hanukkah is different. The Ika Mitzvah, because Hanukkah is a Mitzvah. Because Hanukkah is a Mitzvah. So then, uh, so then, um, that is why even nowadays, um, it's going to be relevant. All right. So even nowadays, right, I guess as, as opposed to like some of the other days in Megillus Tainus, like, you know, a certain event happened. So they said it's a, spe- uh, you know, a fancy day, so we don't fast. But here it's actually Hanukkah where there's mitzvahs involved. And uh, so therefore, even nowadays, uh, we would not fast on Hanukkah. And that is why Rabbi Yezir and Rabbi Yoshua took a stance against the fast that was enacted. However, it is not a proof to say that Megillus Tainus is necessarily relevant nowadays. Amalei Abai says Abai to Rav Yosef, v'tibotol ihi v'tibotol mitzvasa. But one second, says Abai, so what? Meaning, why don't we say that nowadays, uh, meaning, why, why, why don't we say 
you know, if we're going to say that Megillus Tanis is bottle, right? Because what was Rav Yosef saying? Rav Yosef is essentially saying, look, you could still argue that Megillus Tanis is bottle nowadays. However, the only reason why Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua were saying that you're not allowed to fast on Hanukkah is because Hanukkah is unique. Because there's a mitzvah. But it says Abai, so what? Why not? If in fact Megillus Tainus is bottle, so then Hanukkah should be bottle and any mitzvahs associated, associated with Hanukkah would go away as well. So Kila, why are we saying that just because there's mitzvahs associated with Hanukkah, that makes it different? Why don't we just say that everything falls away, including Hanukkah and including whatever mitzvahs are associated with it? It's, right? If we're saying Megillus Tainus is bottle nowadays, so then every, all, everything should be bottle, including Hanukkah. So Elo Amr of Yosef, Surada says Rav Yosef, Shani Hanukkah, Demefar Seim Niso. So it says um, uh, Rav Yosef that actually, okay, so the reason why Hanukkah is, is, is unique is because it's already, it's already basically established among Israel. What does Rashi say? Demefar Seim Niso, Kfar, Ugali Lechol Yisrael. It's already revealed to all the Yidin, Aide Shinagabu, and Mitzvahs, because the Yidin were Makayim, the Mitzvahs of Hanukkah, Vechzikubo, Kshel Torah, Velonach, and Levatlon. Like, it's already been basically, you know, firmly established among, among the Yidin to light menorah and, you know, Hallel and, and all of those things. And therefore, and because it's like basically firmly established in the, you know, in Jewish tradition. So therefore, that's why it stays. And that's why we don't fast on Hanukkah. But the says of Yosef, um, you know, you could still argue that all of the other um, uh, days listed in Megillus Tainus are no longer relevant. Most of Ravacha by Huna. Now, Ravacha bar Huna as Akasha. Bitlosu betishrei betelas ad karto min shtarya. So, it says Ravacha bar Huna that in Megillus Tainus it says that on the third day of Tishrei, betelas ad karto min shtarya, that on the third of Tishrei, the Chachamim were able to essentially convince all of Israel to stop writing the Shem Hashem on their documents. What does that mean? Because she goes to Malchus Yovon Gezeira, because at one point, this is in the Megillah Stinus, right? That, 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 that one of the days listed in Megillah Stinus that we don't fast on that day is the third of Tishrei. And the reason why we do not fast on the third of Tishrei is because um, once upon a time, she goes on Malchus Yovon Gezeira, that the Greeks made a Gezeira, Shelo Lahazkir Shem Shemayim Al Piyim, that you should never mention the word of God, the name of God. And when the Chashmonoim um, managed to defeat the Greeks, Hiskinu Shehu Mazkir and Shem Shemayim Afilu Bishtaris. The Chashmonoim said in response to the fact that the Greeks would not allow the, the name of God to be mentioned, we want to do the opposite. And even on documents, we should be saying the name of God. That we want the name of God to be everywhere, even on documents. And this is what they would write on the documents. That on the year X of Yochanan the Kohen Gadol, the Kel Elyon to God. And therefore, in response um, to the Greeks saying that you're not allowed to mention the name of God, the Hashmonoim said we dafka want to mention the name of God, and we're even going to write the name of God on all of our documents. But when the rabbis heard about this, Amru they said, But the rabbis said that what happens? You have a star, right? The star says that Ruvain lent Shimon money. So now Reuven has a star that says that, uh, that, that Shimon now owes him money. And on the star it says that it was the third year of Yochanan Kohen Gadol, Lekel Elyon to God. But then, what happens? Shimon pays back Reuven for what he borrowed. What does Reuven now do with this document that says that Shimon owes him money and it says God's name on it? Well, it's irre- irrelevant now. So he throws it in the garbage. Right, and therefore, that along with the document goes the name of God. The name of God is now in the garbage. Uvitlum. So the Chachamim said, "That's it. You know, we we don't want the name of God to be on documents because it's going to end up in the garbage, and that's obviously not what we want." And the big chiddush here 
was that this was basically a minig that all the Yidden were doing, right? Everybody was writing God's name on, on documents. What are the chances that you're going to successfully convince everybody to stop writing God's name on documents? But somehow they succeeded and everybody stopped writing God's name on documents. And that day they made into a, uh, and that day they made into a yomtiv. That when they realized that they successfully managed to convince everybody to stop writing God's name on the documents, they made it into a yomtiv and they would not fast on that day. Now, and if it enters your mind to say that nowadays Megillus Tainus is irrelevant, well then, Kamaisa bottle, well, I don't understand. All of the Yom Tovim, the days listed in Megillus Tainus, they were already made null and void. Achwan Yosem Osifin, then why would the rabbis be adding new days to Megillus Tainus, new days that we don't fast upon them, if the previous days were already made null and void? Meaning the assumption at this point is that this happened, this third day of Tishrei thing, when they managed to convince everybody to stop writing God's name on the documents, so the assumption is that this day, that this day that uh, then they made it to Yom Tif, that you don't fast on, the, on this day, the assumption is that this happened after the Beis HaMikdosh. And if we're saying that post Beis HaMikdosh, Megillus Tainus was bottle, well then why would, if Megillus Tainus is already bottle, why would they now be adding another day to Megillus Tainus? It's irrelevant. So rather what? It must be that Megillus Tainus is, is relevant nowadays, and that's why the rabbis added a day to Megillus Tainus even post to which the Gemara answers, well, actually, this whole thing with the documents in the name of God didn't happen post Beis HaMikdosh, it happened during the Beis HaMikdosh, and that is why they added uh, another day, right, the third of Tishrei, that you don't fast on this day, because um, because um, the Beis HaMikdosh was still around. However, post Beis HaMikdosh, uh, Megillus Tanis would be irrelevant. But Frakti Gemara, if we're talking about when the Beis HaMikdash is around, well then why would the rabbis add the third day of Tishrei as a day that you don't fast on it? But as you guys might be thinking already, when's Tzom Gedalia? Tzom Gedalia is the third day of Tishrei. Now, as we had said, right, the Pasuk in Zechariah had said, Tzom Arvi, Tzom Achamishi, uh, we said, what was Tzoma Shvi? The third of Tishrei. When Gedai ibn Achikam was killed. And we said what? That when the Beis HaMikdash is, is, is around, so it's the Sasun of the Simcha. It's only a fast day when there's no Shalom, when there's no Beis HaMikdash. When there is a Beis HaMikdash, so it's a day of Sasun of the It's a festival, it's a holiday. And the Mela would be a day that we wouldn't fast on. So why do I need the rabbis to say that on the third day of Tishrei, we don't fast because that was the day that they convinced everybody to stop writing God's name on the documents. Memele, you're not fasting anyways. Because it, that, that, that's the day, the third day of Tishrei, is the day that Gedai ibn Achikam was killed. And we said that it's only a fast day when there's no Beis HaMikdash, but it, when there is a Beis HaMikdash, then it's a, so the Sasun the Simcha. Memele, you wouldn't be fasting anyways. So if we want to say that the rabbis added this day uh, regarding the Shtaris, when the Beis Mikdash existed, why would they be adding this day? Or already you weren't fasting on that day because it was the day that Gedai ibn Achikam was killed and when the Beis Mikdash is around, it's the Sasun of the Simcha, you wouldn't fast on that day anyways. Friends, you get the Kasha, right? So Omar Rav, so says Rav, Lo nitzucha elo leso es shilifonov. So says Rav, well, you have a good point there. However, the reason why they added this day to Megillus Tainus is because to say that, well, if we add this day to Megillus Tainus, well, all of the days of Megillus Tainus, not only would you not fast on that day, but also the day before and the day after Oichit as well. So therefore, Yes, while in Achinami, the Pasuk says that, that, uh, the third of Tishrei, when the Beis Mikdash is around, would be a Yasun the Simchun, you wouldn't fast. However, what about the day before? What about the second day of Tishrei? What about the fourth day of Tishrei? So by adding the third day of Tishrei to the Megillah's Tainus, even when the Beis Mikdash is around, so then, uh, you also wouldn't be fasting on the second day of Tishrei, 
Tishrei, and on the fourth day of Tishrei, Oichit. Okay, fine. But shall the fun of Nami typically dava le yom shalachar rish chodesh? Oh, but then fact the But still, I, I don't need you to tell me that um, the second day of Tishrei you're not going to fast on because it's the day after Rosh Chodesh, and Rosh Chodesh is a day that you don't fast. So Mimele, you know, if we're going to say that it's not just Rosh Chodesh, but that all of these days that you don't fast, it's not just that the day of, but also the day prior, the day post. So already you're not going to be fasting on the second day of Tishrei because it's the day after the first day of Tishrei, i.e. the day after Rosh Chodesh, and you don't fast on Rosh Chodesh. So Mimele, you don't fast on the second day either. And you're also not going to fast on the third day because it's the day, right? It's Tzom Gedali, which when the Beis Mikdash is around would be the, the Sosun and the Simcha. So then, I, why do I need to write the, the day of the Shtaris, that whole thing that was on the third day of Tishrei? Why do I have to include that in Megillah's Tainus? I'm already not fasting because it's the, the day, you know, the day that Gedali ibn Chikim was killed. And for the day before already, I'm not fasting because it's the day after Rosh Chodesh. And for the Gemara, Rosh Chodesh Daraisa V'Daraisa Lebo Yechizik. Oh, well, the day, you know, yes, we don't fast on Rosh Chodesh, but Rosh Chodesh is, uh, it's Mida Oraisa, right? Chodesh is Elochem, it's the Oraisa. And the whole reason why all these days listed in Megillah's Tainus, so we don't fast on them, but also we don't fast the day before and the day after, is in order to be Mechazik that day, right? In order to say, take this seriously, don't forget about it. So also already from the day before and the day after, you already don't fast. However, when it comes to Rosh Chodesh, it's me the Oraisa. We're not concerned about you like, you know, skipping Rosh Chodesh or forgetting about it or something like that. So therefore, uh, you don't fast on Rosh Chodesh, but the day before and the day after is irrelevant. Um, I mean, you could fast the day before Rosh Chodesh and the day after Rosh Chodesh. Um, and therefore, we list the uh, third day of Tishrei as that day of when they stopped writing God's name in the, in the, in the Shtaros um, to say that, yes, you don't fast on the third of Tishrei, but also on the second and the fourth. Uh, the Tanya, as we learn in Abraisa, that the Oraisa doesn't require um, Tikkun, that uh, it doesn't require Chizik. The Tanya, as we learn in Abraisa, Ayom Ele, Haksum Megillah's Tainus, that we learn in Abraisa, that it says that these days that are listed in the Megillah's Tainus, Asur Bain Lifnaim, Bain Lacharem, that um, the days listed in Megillah's Tainus, you don't fast on them, as well as the day before and the day after. However, Shabosos, Vyobim Tovim, but Shabbos, Yom Tif, Heim Asurim, you don't fast on them, but the Fneim, Ulacharein, Mutarin. But you are allowed to fast on Erev Shabbos, on Erev Yom Tif, and the day after Shabbos, and the day after Yom Tif, Mahefesh, Ben Zelozeb. What's the difference between the days list, listed in Megillah's Tainus and Shabbos and Yom Tif? Halalu Divrei Teire, Fein Divrei Teire, Tzuichin Chizik. Well, um, Shabbos and Yom Tif is Mido Oraisa, and we don't need Chizik. We don't have to strengthen Shabbos and Yom Tif. So we just say, look, on Shabbos and Yom Tif, don't fast. But the day before, the day afterwards, you're allowed to fast. Halalu Divrei Sofrim, whereas the days listed in Megillah's Tainus are Midor Abonon, for Divrei Sofrim, Tzuchin Chizik, and uh, the Abonons require extra artificial strengthening. Therefore, we also don't fast the day before and the day after. So therefore, we could say, that the third of Tishrei, the day when they stopped writing the Shem Hashem in the Shtaris, so that was added to Megillus Tainus, they said, yes, you don't fast on the third day, but also you don't fast on the second and fourth days of Tishrei, respectively. but yom yom But still, the third day of Tishrei, we don't fast, because it's the day that Gedaya ben Achikam was killed, right? So we said that when the basement is not around, so it's a fast day, but when the basement is, is around, so it's Sosom Vesimcha. So let's say that, uh, well, if the third day of Tishrei, you don't fast when the basement is around because of Gudayi ben Achikum, so then also the second and the fourth day, you would not fast. So Om Ravashi, Gudayi ben Achikum, Divrei Kabbalu. Ravashi says, well, Gudayi ben Achikum is in the, is in the, uh, is in the Tanakh. It's in, um, uh, Zechariah, which is one of the Nevi'im, one of the Treyosu. And um, words in the Navi are like words in the Torah, and therefore they do not need Chizik. And therefore, yes, you would not fast on the third day of Tishrei, but on the second and fourth, you would be able to fast. Comes the um, thing with the Shtaris, 
to say that we don't fast on the third day of Tishrei, but also we don't fast on days two and day four. Most of Rav Tuvi Bamasna, Rav Tuvi Bamasna asks the following question: Be'esim v'sman yebei on the twenty-eighth day of Adar, also b'sorta tav to the Udoi. So a very favorable, very good um, announcement came to the Yidden that they do not need to um, refrain from studying Torah. What does this mean? She goes up Amalchus Gezeira Shlo Yaisku that the um, that the um, 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 the Malchus, the kingship, the people, the rulers, the authorities made a Gezeira that the Yidden were not allowed to study Torah. They were not allowed to perform the brismila on their sons. And that they have to be Mechal Shabbos. Friends, that's terrible. So what did Yehuda ben Shamua and his friends do? Who is Yehuda ben Shamua? Was he like a brother of Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua? I don't know. So they went and they got advice. So they got advice from a certain matron that all of the um, upper echelons of Roman society would 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 um, uh, be by this matron, would visit this matron. and she advised the Yidden, Go and uh, make a, a rally, make a protest at night. So they went and they protested at night. Amru, they said, So in the name of God, Look, we are not your brothers. We don't come from the same father. And we don't come from the same mother. And they asked the Romans, We don't understand. Why should we be any different than any other nation under your authority, Shatim Grozna Lenu Kizeris cautious that you make such terrible decrees against us. What did we do? Why are we any different? Uvitlum and their protests worked and the authorities um, um, sort of let up on their Kizeris. Vosuayom Asau Yomtiv and they made that day into a uh, into a Yomtiv. So the assumption is that this also happened um, after the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, and we're saying we Megillas Tainis. And if we're saying that after the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, Megillas Tainis becomes irrelevant, well, Kamaisa Bottle Achvanyoso Mosifin. Well, I don't understand. Right? We said that this day when uh, this Gezeira was Mevutol. That they got rid of this gezerah, they added it to Megillus Tainus, that, that you're not going to fast on this day, on the 28th day of Adar. Now, um, interesting, I think the 28th day of Adar is Taka Yard side of a friend of mine, I think. Um, anyways, so, so, um, I'll go upon him. So, so, uh, where were we? So, so new. So, this whole thing happened on. Uh, after the base of Mikdash. And um, we're saying that they added this day to the Megillus Tainus. So now I don't understand. If we're saying that Megillus Tainus was made null and void, well then, why would they be adding this day to the Megillus Tainus if it's irrelevant at this point? So, and if you want to say, well, maybe let's say that this story happened during the time of the base of Mikdash. For Yehuda ben Shamuel, Tamid Asher of Meir. But Yehuda ben Shamua was a student of Reb Meir. And Reb Meir, Basar Ochi And Reb Meir was after the Churban Beis Hamitosh. That's for sure. Because Reb Meir was a student of Rabbi Kiva, was a student of Rabbi Eliezer, who was a student of Rabbi Yochan ben Zaka. The Beis Hamitosh was the Shurb in Rabbi Yochan ben Zaka's lifetime. So it's already a few generations later until you get to Reb Meir. So Reb Meir was after the Beis Hamitosh was destroyed. And Yehuda ben Shamua, who was you know, from the story who made the who made the protest was a student of Reb Meir. So Mimele, that was after the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, and yet we're saying that they added this day to the Megillus Tainus, which sounds like Megillus Tainus was still relevant even post Beis Hamikdash. Ditnan, how do we know that Yehuda ben Shamua was a student of Reb Meir? 
Okay, from a technical, uh, we see a Mishnah that right, that shows that Reb, that 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 Reb Yudah ben Shemua was a that Yudah ben Shemua was a student of Reb Meir. As it says, Klei's Chuches Shenikvu. Let's say you have a, um, a glass vessel and it was Tome, and you put a hole in it, so now it's no longer you know, it's considered broken, so it's no longer Tome. Uh, but then you fill in the hole that you made in the in the uh, glass vessel with some lead. Um, so the question is, does it go back to its original tuma? So normally we would say that um, glass, once it's broken, would not revert to its original tuma. But since you filled it in with lead, maybe it could be considered like metal, and therefore it would revert to to its original tuma. So that's the shaila. So I'm, um, so it says Rav Shimon Gamliel, but I think it's. Um, Rav Shimon ben Elazar, what was it? Uh, it's changed. Rav Shimon ben Elazar. It says Rav Shimon ben Elazar because Rav Shimon ben Gamliel wouldn't make sense here. Um, Yehuda ben Shamua metame mishum Reb Meir because um, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel would not be quoting somebody who's quoting Reb Meir because he would be older than Reb Meir. Rav Shimon ben Gamliel was Reb Yudah Nasi's father, and um, Reb Meir was, I guess, a contemporary of uh, Reb Yudah Hanasi. Yeah. No. Whoa. Wait. No. No. What am I talking about? No, Reb Meir was Reb Yudah Anat was Rebbe's uh, Rebbe, right? Reb Yudah Anat was a student of Reb Meir, but uh, but you, but Reb Shimon ben Gamliel would not be quoting Yehuda ben Shamua, who was a student of Reb Meir. Anyways, it's not Reb Shimon ben Gamliel; it's Reb Shimon ben Elazar. But uh, Yehuda ben Shamua, Matam Reb Shimon ben Meir, that Yehuda ben Shamua, in the name of Reb Meir, says that this uh, glass is tame because it's considered to be metal. The Chacham Matayrin, the Chacham say that it is tar because we don't treat it as metal; we treat it as glass, and it doesn't go back revert to its original tuma. So. What's the point? The point is that Yudah ben Shamu is quoting Reb Meir, which means that he's a student of Reb Meir, and therefore, if he's a student of Reb Meir, then Mimele he was post based on Mikdash, and if he's post based on Mikdash, then and we're still adding a day to Megillas Tanis, it would sound like Megillas Tanis is still relevant even post based on Mikdash Tanoihi. To which the Gemara answers, okay, whether or not the Megillas Tanis is relevant nowadays is Machlokas Tanoim the Tanias we learn in the Brayso so, Hayom Moele Haelu Haksum Megillas Tanis that these days that were written in the Megillah's Tainus, Bain Bizmancha Beis Mikdash Kaim, Bain Bizmancha Eim Beis Mikdash Kaim, Asurin Tiv Reb Meir. Says Reb Meir that these days that are listed in the Megillah's Tainus um, are relevant during the Beis Mikdash, post Beis Mikdash, they're always relevant. You don't fast on those days. They're special days. Reb Yossi Omer, whereas Reb Yossi disagrees and says, Bizmancha Beis Mikdash Kaim, Asurin, that when the Beis Hamikdash is, uh, you know, is is around, so then these days are relevant. Because it is a it is a, um, a happy day for them. But uh, when the Beis Hamikdash is no longer is standing, so mutarin, then they are no longer these you know days that we um, don't fast on them. Rather, you're allowed to fast on those days. Because I guess it's morning. Uh, I guess these days are, are mournful days now that there's no base Mikdash. Okay. Fine. So Reb Meir says that Megillah's Tanis is relevant even nowadays. Reb Yossi says no, Megillah's Tanis is no longer relevant. Vilchsa um, and the Alacha is Badlu, Vilchsa, Lo Badlu. Okay. So the, on the one hand, the Alacha is that Megillah's Tanis is no longer relevant. On the other hand, we're saying that the Megillah's Tainus is relevant. How could it be both relevant and irrelevant at the same time? So it depends. What it means is that of all of the days listed, listed in Megillah's Tainus, only Hanukkah and Purim are still relevant. We don't fast on Hanukkah or Purim. However, all the other days um, in Megillah's Tainus are no longer relevant and you can fast on them. All right. So the Mishnah had continued and said that in the month of Elul, the messengers would go out to the diaspora, to everybody, and tell them when Rosh Chodesh Elul was, so that you would know when Mimele Rosh Hashanah was 30, day, right, on, right, 30 days later would be Rosh Hashanah. And they would also go out at the beginning of Tishrei, so you would know when the first day of Tishrei was, so that you would know then Mimele, when Yom Kippur is, when Sukkot is, but in fact, the Gemara, once already, the messengers went out at the beginning of Elul, and we're saying that Rosh Hashanah is on day 30 from the first of Elul. So, Mimele, you know when the first of Tishrei is. Why do I need the messengers to go out to tell me about Tishrei? I know when the first of Tishrei is. And then, Mimele, I know when Yom Kippur is, and I know when Sukkot is. And if you're going to say, well, 
But what if they made Elul 30 days? In which case, uh, Rosh Hashanah is not on the 30th day from the beginning of Elul, but rather the 31st day. So, but Rav Chinnah Barkana said the name of Rav, as we saw in Masech de Be'er, Mimos Ezra ve'elach, that from the days of Ezra and onward, lo motzinu elul me'uber, we don't see that elul is ever 30 days. So, memele, we know that elul is always 29 days, so we know that on the next day, so the 30th day from the beginning of elul is always going to be Rosh Hashanah, which means it's the first day of Tishrei, which means that you always then know, if you know when the first day of Elul is, you also know when Rosh Hashanah is, you know when Yom Kippur is, you know when Sukkot is. So why do I need the messengers to go out at the beginning of Tishrei? So the Gemara says, well, yes, it's true. There was never a need to add a day to Elul, to add a 30th day to Elul. However, in the event that we would need to add a 30th day to Elul, we're not scared. We would do it. And therefore, the uh, messengers go out on the first day of Tishrei to confirm when the first day of Tishrei was. Ha, Mikal Rosh Hashanah. But one second. But if you add a day to Elul, it basically ruins Rosh Hashanah. Right? I mean, everyone's going to assume that Rosh Hashanah is the, th- is, is, is the 30th day from the beginning of Elul. If you add, if you make the 30th day still be part of Elul, everyone's going to be celebrating Rosh Hashanah when it's really still Elul, and then the next day is not going to be Rosh Hashanah, right? Assuming that they're only celebrating one day for Rosh Hashanah, which is what it is, Dora Isa. So, and for the Gemara, Mutav Tikalku Rosh Hashanah, Feliz Kalku Kulhu Mo'ados. So the Gemara answers, well, better, you know, if they need to add an extra, in the event that they have to add an extra day to Elul, so better that, sure, it'll interfere with Rosh Hashanah, but better that Rosh Hashanah be interfered with than, you know, than not make Elul 30 days. Meaning if there's a need to add a day to Elul, better just add the day to Elul, even if it means that it'll interfere with Rosh Hashanah, rather than um, not adding it, which would then interfere with Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Um, the Ikanami, you can also infer this, the Katani al Tishim and Pnei Takana Samuadash Mamina, that also if you look at the Mishnah, it says that why did the messengers go out at the beginning of Tishrei? Al Pnei Takana Samuadash, in order to fix the Muadash. Meaning, if there was Mamash a need, right, you know, because in the event that there was Mamash a need, um, that they had to add a 30th day to Elo, so then they would go out in order to, uh, let you know when the first day of Tishrei was, because that, that you can make sure that they fix the other models, Yom Kippur and Sukkot, and make sure that they're going to be at the right time. That's why they would go out. Um, fine. Kivadik. So in the event that they had to make add an extra day to Elul, they would then go out and let everybody know. Well, I mean, it sounds like they would go out and let everybody know every year on Tishrei, but how come? Because in the event that they would have to, they go out every year, because just in case, uh, in the event that they would have to add a day to Elul, yeah, you know, they would they would also let people know about that. Fine. And um, in Kislev, they go out at the beginning of Kislev to let you know when the first day of Kislev was, so that you know when Hanukkah is. They would let you know when the first day of Adar was, so that you would know when Purim is. So the Now, the Mishnah did not say that, well, and what if it was a leap year? So then you would have to go out on uh, other, uh, other say, other Shani, on the second other as well. So this is talking about a situation where, so other already came in, and the, all the messengers went out to all the places to say, okay, this is when the first day of other is, which means that Mimela, the 14th day is going to be Purim, and the 15th day is going to be uh, Shushan Purim. So after all the messengers already went out, Bezdin said, wait a second, we need to add another month to the year. So now, let's read that again. So, and in the event that after the messengers already went out for other to let them know when Rosh Chodesh other was, if they then decided that they needed to add another other to the year, they needed to make a leap here. It does not say that in that case, the messengers have to go out a second time in the other Shani to let them know when Rosh Chodesh other Shani was so that they know when to do Purim in other Shani as well. So Masnisan de Loki Rebbe. So our Mishnah clearly then is not like Rebbe, right? Meaning, because what happened? The messengers already went out for the month of other, which means that all the people are going to get the memo 
and they're gonna celebrate Purim in the first uh, right. They're, they're gonna get. They're gonna say, okay, this is when Rosh Chodesh. Otherwise, they're gonna separate celebrate Purim. Now, the question is, if the rabbis then said that now we have to add another month of other, so then I would think. That they have to go again also on the second month of Adar to let them know when Rosh Chodesh Adar Sheni was so that they'll make sure to do Purim in the second Adar as well because that's when they have to do Purim. So, but it doesn't say that that, that they went out a second time. So, Masis and Deloki Rebbe. So, an Aram Mishnah must not be like Rebbe. The Tanya that uh, we learn in the Bible, Rebbe Omer, says Rebbe, Imnis Abra Ashono, that if they're the year ended up being a leap year. Yotzin af al other asheni mipnei apurim that the messengers have to go out also in the second other to let them know that hey, this is when the second other is beginning, so that you celebrate Purim at the right time. So leimim ba kamifugei and let's say that the machlokas between the Tanakama who says that they don't go out on the second other and Rebbe who says that they do go out on the second other is based on the following machlokas. Demar sover. Kol mitzvah sa noagos basheni noagos barishon that the tan that 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 the tana of our mishnah holds that all of the mitzvahs of the second other of other sheni also um, um, you know are, uh, work in the first other and therefore memele if they already did purim in the first other right because we're saying that the messengers from the first other had already gone out. And only after that did the rabbis say that, wait, we have to add another other. So since the messengers already went out, so we're assuming that everybody got the memo and they already were saying, okay, Purim is going to be in two weeks. You know, basically whenever they get the memo, they'll know when Purim is going to be. And they celebrated Purim in the first other. So once they already celebrate Purim in the first other, so then they don't need to celebrate Purim again in the second other. Um, fine. So therefore, they, the messengers don't go out in the second other as well. Umar Sover Whereas Rebbe holds that all, all the mitzvahs that um, are knowing in other Sheni are not relevant for other Rishon. And therefore, even though the messengers had already gone out um, um, to all the places and told them when Rosh Chodesh other was, so that they'll know when Purim was, and they're going to celebrate Purim in the first other, Rebbe says, that, that, that doesn't make any difference because they're still going to have to celebrate it in the second other and therefore the messengers go out on the second other as well. Lo, to which the Gemara answers, no. The Chuli Alma mitzvah sa no'agos basheni ain no'agos barishon. Everyone agrees that the mitzvahs that um, you have to do in other sheni are irrelevant in other rishon. And therefore, when there's two others, like this year, there's going to be two others, so you celebrate Purim in the second other. If you do it in the first other, it makes no difference. It's irrelevant. You still have to do it in the second other. And therefore, um, so if that's the case, then according to our Mishnah, our Mishnah says that, that the uh, messengers go out on, at the beginning of other so that they'll know when Purim is. But in the event that they then make uh, Purim at a second other, we're saying that you don't need to go out a second time. But why not? Because if everyone is agreeing that if you do Purim in the first other, it's irrelevant, you have to do it in the second other, so then wouldn't, shouldn't the Tanakan, shouldn't the uh, author, the Tan and our Mishnah agree that for the second other, the messengers so, should go out so that the people will know when Purim is in the second other because they have to do Purim in the second other? How come our, the Tan of our Mishnah doesn't say that? How come the Tanah of our Mishnah leaves out the second other and does not say that the messengers need to go out? So, V'hacha, B'ibr Shana Kamiflige, well, the Machlokas between our Tanah and Rebbe is about how exactly adding a month to the year works. How exactly the other Shani works. The Tanah is within the Brisa, Kama Ibr Shana Lamed Yom. How long is the um, month that you add to the year? 30 days. Rav Shem Gamliel Omer Chodesh Whereas Rav Shimon Gamliel says it's 29 days. Maishna lamid tiyade chodesh nami yade. So now one second. So meaning, the point being that if you know already that the month that they're adding to the year is 30 days or 29 days or whatever it is, so then you know exactly when Purim is, right? Meaning, if um, the, the messengers go out on 
the first day of Adar. And then it turns out that it's a leap year. So, Beseder, you don't have to go out again to let them know when the beginning of Adar Shani was. Because either way, I mean, it doesn't matter. Meaning, if you know that the month that they're adding is 30 days, so then Purim is just going to be 30 days after the first, you know, after the 14th of Adar Rishon. So therefore, uh, you don't really need, um, so therefore you don't need witnesses to go out at the beginning of Adar Shani. Now, the interesting thing is that we're assuming that, so, so the Tan of our Mishnah is assuming that it's, um, 30 days, and therefore they already know when Purim is going to be in Adar Shani, so you don't need the, um, witnesses to go out. But now the Gemara says, but Mishnah Lamad Yadeh Chodesh Nami Yadeh, like, what, how exactly do you understand the Machogas between Rebbe and the Tan of our Mishnah, meaning we want to say the Tan of our Mishnah says that, well, they know it's 30 days, and Rebbe says that it's 29, but according to Rebbe, they also know it's 29 days later. So what's the difference? So Amr Papa, so it says to Papa, let's go right there for a second. Man Amr Chodesh Ratzah Chodesh Ratzah Shloshim. So what it means is that the Man Amr who says that um, the month that they add to the year could be 29, right, a Chodesh, it means it could be either 29 or 30 days. So therefore, Rebbe holds like the opinion that it could be either 29 or 30 days. And therefore, you need the witness, you need the messengers to go out at the beginning of um, other Shani to let them know when Purim is going to be because you know the first other could be either 29 or 30 days so you don't necessarily know when Purim is going to fall out in other Shani so you need the messengers to go out and tell the people however according to the Tana of our Mishnah um, other Rishon is always going to be 30 days and therefore you you know once the messengers already went out by the for other Rishon so then you know when you know the 14th of other Rishon is, and you know that um, Purim is just going to be 30 days after that. So you don't need the messengers to go out Davka at the beginning of uh, other Shani to let them know when Rosh Chodesh other Shani was because it doesn't matter. You'll, they'll know anyways that Purim is just going to be 30 days after um, the 14th of other Rishon. Therefore, you don't need, according to the Tan of our Mishnah, for the witnesses to uh, the messengers to go out and to tell the uh, people about other Shani. Well, friends, we'll stop here for now. Uh, because this then goes on a whole arichus into tomorrow's daf. So, we, well, tomorrow's daf is going to be a whole thing. Anyways, um, that was daf Yutes, daf 19 of Masech Rosh Hashanah. Friends, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the, you know, really the, I would say like the bulk of our daf today really talked about Megillah's Tainus, which is this interesting brisa which talks about all these days that we don't fast on these days because they're special days. And the question was, so Machlokas between Rav and Rav Hanina on the one hand who say that and um, Megillah's Tainus nowadays is irrelevant. And um, uh, Rabbi Yochan and Rabbi Yeshua Malevi who says, Ma Om, Megillah's Tainus is still relevant nowadays, that we still don't fast on these days. And we tried to bring proofs in different ways to, to, to say that Megillah's Tainus uh, is relevant or isn't relevant nowadays. Um, and then ultimately we said, look, Megillah's Tainus is not relevant anymore, but Purim and Hanukkah are still relevant. We don't fast on those days. Um, we got at the end to this uh, interesting uh, machlokas between the Tanakama and Rebbe about what happens when there is a leap year. Do witnesses go out uh, at the beginning of Adar Sheni to let the people know when Rosh Chodesh Adar Sheni was? Uh, the Tan of our Mishnah says no, they don't go out at the beginning of Adar Sheni because the people know that um, uh, Adar Rishon, is the, i.e. the month that they add to the year, is always just going to be 30 days. So Mimele, um, Purim is going to be 30 days after um, the 14th of Adar Rishon whereas Rebbe says no the messengers do need to go out to tell the people when uh, Rosh Chodesh Adar Sheni was because um, uh, Adar Rishon could sometimes be 29 or 30 days so they have to let the people know when Rosh Chodesh Adar Sheni was so that they'll know when uh, when to celebrate Purim friends that was that few tests um, I hope you enjoyed it peace